Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and what I got for you today is another review of the GDU-02. Now, the other day I took it for its first flight, and I didn't get to check out and demonstrate all of its features. Uh, what I'd like to do today is try to demonstrate some of the ones that I missed in the previous flight. Most notably, I want to start off with Waypoint, and then we'll see what it, we got left after that. We're going to do some Waypoint flying out here. Now, this is not as, as scenic an area as I was flying the other day, okay? But I like it because it's wide open spaces, and I know the area very well, so, you know, if it goes down, I should be able to find it. You know? uh, I just want to be a little bit safe with it. this first attempt at Waypoint flying. Now, uh, for I've already done the uh, setup of the quadcopter. It is actually ready to go right now. And there's one thing I forgot to show you the other day that, you know, when you unfold these arms, you also can, un you should unfold these little landing gear legs that are on the bottom here. This gives you a little bit more clearance for the gimbal. So yeah, remember to unfold those. I did not do that the other day. And I should have, <laughs> okay? Just let you know about that. So what I want to do today is I wanted to set up uh, and do waypoint flying. And to do such, in the lower left corner, right by the S, you see the little map icon? We're going to click on that map icon right there and switch to bat mode. And it should come up. Now, last night, before I came out here, I connected this app to Wi-Fi at home and scrolled over this area in map mode. And that saves the video or saves the map data directly to your phone inside its cache. So, you know, you don't really need data is what I'm saying. If you're going to a remote location to fly, particularly in waypoint mode, you can download the, the uh, map of the area at home by just opening this app at home and scrolling over the area using home Wi-Fi to uh, get the data. We're going to take to the air first. I'm going to hit take off. Take to the air, and then I'm going back to waypoint mode. Now, I guess you got to do this uh, setting up the waypoints while it's flying. So, selecting waypoint mode and setting the first waypoint as the intersection down the road here. I'm too zoomed in. There's waypoint one, and waypoint two, that intersection. Then waypoint three coming back to the gully. Then waypoint four going up the gully. Then waypoint five coming right back to us. There, that's close enough. And then hitting go. Stay sure. We'll do it. Waypoints uploaded successful, so yeah. You need to be flying first. And let's see it go on its route. And there it goes. And zooming out on my screen. So we can see where it's going. And I'm going to switch back to uh, camera view. I want to see the FPV view of, of this trip. And also I'm going to put on my glasses so I can keep an eye on the quadcopter too at the same time. And it is recording as we're going up on. We're coming up to that intersection. That intersection is about uh, 280 meters away. If I remember correctly, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe 200 meters away. <laughs> it's over 200 meters. But we're coming up to the intersection. Now, I'm keeping my antenna pointed toward the quadcopter, keeping the flat end pointed toward the quadcopter to maintain um, good FPV on this quadcopter. Now it's turning to the right and heading to the second waypoint. Still got pretty good reception here, 280 meters away. Still got pretty good FPV reception. 285 meters away. Now I like how this maintains its, you know, 20 or 20 meters above the ground here. It's got those acoustic sensors. We're not depending on the uh, um, barometer to maintain its position. Okay. 
Next waypoint is about that road there at 358 meters away. Pretty dang neat, folks. Once we reach that intersection there, it, that road, I think that's the next intersection. Yeah, that's the next intersection. It should stop and then turn to the right and head toward the gully. 492 meters away. 500 meters, folks, and still got good FPV reception. Now it'll fly back toward the gully. That's pretty dang good. You know, now keep in mind this uh, controller has a built in FPV repeater and amplifier. So th that's how we are getting this extraordinary range, along with this nice antenna that it's got on it. Uh, I guess a high dB antenna, flat uh, panel, and what do they call these? Uh, uh, circuit board antenna. I forgot what they're called, P PC something or other antenna. <laughs> my my uh, fans will correct me there what that what this type of antenna is called. But that's how we're getting this extraordinary range with FPV over FG Wi-Fi. And it's going up to the gully. And it should once we get over over the gully, it should turn to the left. Going over the gully. I see myself off in the distance there. Turn to the left and then go up the gully. And away it goes. So awesome quadcopter. <laughs> this um, works very well. Now keep in mind it also has obstacle avoidance. So if there was trees in the way, um, it should detect those if it if there was an obstacle in the way that would block it and automatically uh, stop, it would stop. So you'd have to either manually fly it back. I don't know if it would go around the obstacle. I haven't tried that yet. But um, either that or uh, hit return to home and have it fly back home. And when it does return to home, it faces uh, toward the direction it's traveling. So, you know, it can still use its obstacle avoidance sensors to uh, bring it back or to protect it on, or keep it from hitting something on the way back home. So it's got that obstacle avoidance and again it's got those acoustic sensors so it can de detect the ground beneath it. Oh, still got good reception at 365 meters. Now, now it should be coming back to me in my general direction. It is. So yeah this is a, a great quadcopter. I don't think the Spark has this feature if I remember correctly. I have a Spark. I haven't flown it that often. You know why, folks? <laughs> the dang software updates aggravate me, and the no-fly zones aggravate me, too, because, you know, it says I can't fly here in this area, but I can, because it's a Sunday. <laughs> so, you know, some of the, it's not entirely uh, accurate, those no-fly zones. And those forced software updates always aggravate me. Every time I turn the dang thing on, i got to do another update on it. That and my Phantom. i got a Phantom 4, too. <laughs> Both of those aggravate me. But it's coming back. There it is. You can see it in the sky coming back toward me after its voyage around the desert. And it's reached the last waypoint. All in all, pretty neat flight. <laughs> I like that. Let me hit stop on the video for a second here and start the recording one more time. This time I want to put the uh, quadcopter off a little bit lower. Right about that altitude there. And over here. And I am going to pick up my launch pad. I'll leave it here so I'll come back and pick it up. What I want to do next, folks, is trying how much battery powder I got left 58 percent I'm gonna turn it toward me and lower it the gimbal so it sees me in the car and what we're gonna do is try uh, intelligent flight mode of follow me and going back to follow me there you are and hit sure and then circling over the car 
So, and then I'm going to get in the car. <laughs> and we'll go for a little drive. Put up my right there. And let's go for a ride. See how well it works. Turn it to the left. Is it maintaining lock on the car? It is. So we'll drive around the area real quick. See how well it can stay on this car. Went well. How fast am I going? About 10 miles an hour. Let's take it up a little bit faster. See how well it can, can or stay with this car. 15 miles an hour. It's staying with the car. <laughs> So, you know, if you've got a uh, motorcycle or if you, you want to follow, have it, well, it's about it. 50 miles an hour seems to be, it's trying to keep up with me. Let's go down in the gully. See if it changes altitude as I go down in the gully. Or does it stay uh, the same altitude above the ground? Saying 12 meters above the ground. Oh, I don't want to go down there. <laughs> There's all kinds of garbage down there. It might put holes in my tire. So let's turn this car around. <laughs> my dog's here's the is barking at the drone. <laughs> we'll come up this way. It's trying to lock onto my back window here. Well, it's still locked on, although the little lock-on window is getting smaller. <laughs> That's the drone. <laughs> bouncing, bouncing. Let's go down this way. <laughs> I see it following me. <laughs> right behind me. So it's working really well. <laughs> let's, let's give it some speed. Let's see if it can go 20 miles an hour. 120. 20 miles an hour right now, folks. It's trying to, to hang on to me. Oh, here comes the car Woo! the other way. Woo! Wouldn't you know it? Woo! Woo! Uh, I'm going this way anyways. Woo! go over here now <coughs> it's still following me but at a distance <coughs> so, <coughs> sorry about all the barking <laughs> she, she's <coughs> seeing okay that's that's it <laughs> so I'm gonna get out of the car to stop the barking here <laughs> so where's that drone there it is coming up behind me so let's bring it down, and I'm going to hit stop first, and bring it over toward me. And finally, let's go up a little bit higher, over here. One thing I haven't demonstrated yet, and I know I haven't, is the circle me. So let's try the circle me mode, while oh, we still got battery power, I'm going to uh, exit that. And going back to intelligent flight mode, and um, where's that circle me? There it is. And selecting that, and point of interest, and hit sure, and start circling. Oh, this point of interest circle. <laughs> Let's adjust the radius side button. Does that do it? Okay. What I want to do is go again, selecting the, uh, okay, rocket mode. Let's try ro rocket mode. Rocket mode, sure. Flight distance 20 meters, start to fly. 
I, I really can't get that thing to work with uh, pointed at me in rocket mode. So we're going to hit exit. Coming back down again. Point it over toward me. Lowering the gimbal so you see me. Put me in the center. Let's go back into these features again. And uh, instead of rocket mode, let's try vision circle. Make the target appear in the picture after making a rectangle double clicking. The drone will keep tracking. Let's hit sure. And that's me. And that should be it. Is it circling? There, a true circle. And follow me too, I believe, at the same time. Drone battery is low. Gosh, darn it. Well, we're going to land it here shortly. Oh, I think it lands itself. <laughs> it lands itself. Goes back home and lands itself when the battery gets low. So we're going to come back down. Landing, landing, landing. We we'll landed there. So, when a battery gets low, it, it heads home, apparently. So that's the uh, second flight of the GDU. Oh, two. Let me turn it off. Quadcopter off. Second flight overall. <laughs> pretty nifty. I really like that waypoint flying. Uh, I was pretty far distant and. We're still getting good FPV range uh, throughout that um, trek. And again, I was flying or driving my car up to about 20 miles per hour. It was staying up with me about somewhere between 15 and 20 miles per hour. It started to drift a little bit back. So I guess the top speed of this is around 18, something like that. So that is again the second flight on the GDU 02. Actually, a pretty dang capable uh, little drone. So I, I kind of like it. I'm going to keep this is a keeper, folks. Uh, Quadcopter 101. Hope you enjoyed this flight, Quadcopter 101, signing out.